Hello everyone. Today we'll take a look at the best smartphones under $500 in the market for 2021. I made this list based on my personal opinion and I'll try to help you find the right one for your needs. To see the most up-to-date prices and find out more information about these smartphones, you can check out the links in the description below. Before we start, I have a question for you guys. Which smartphone are you using right now and what is your opinion on it? Let me know in the comments. Number 5. Xiaomi Poco X3 – Best Under $250 The Xiaomi Poco X3 is all about value, like every Poco handset before it and almost every Xiaomi device. The Poco X3 is probably the best phone for gaming at its price. It has a large, well-specced screen, loud stereo speakers, and its Qualcomm Snapdragon 732G processor handles titles such as Fortnite far better than the Snapdragon 665 and Exynos 9611 phones that you might buy for the same cash. The Poco X3 has an impressive-sounding 64-megapixel main camera. It takes good shots but suffers from significant purple fringing, more so than the majority of rival phones in this price range. The Poco X3 NFC has just about the most advanced display at the price. This is a 6.67-inch IPS LCD panel of 2400 by 1080 pixel resolution and has a trim punch hole for the front camera. While impressive, they alone don't make the Poco X3 screen special. It's the 120Hz refresh rate that does. Most budget phones come with a screen that refreshes 60 times a second. It's in the app menu where you'll notice this most. Your current phone may not look clunky in motion, but put it next to the Poco X3 and you'll be proven wrong. If fast refresh rates or gaming is important for you, then you won't find a better phone than this at this price range. Number 4. Moto G Power 2021 – Best Battery Life This year, there are three new G-Series phones, including the Moto G Power. Arguably, this is the device with the widest appeal. There's no stylus included, but it's got more muscle than the G-Play, and it has a big honking battery. The G Power is a plastic phone, but it's less ugly than last year's G phones, which had glossy plastic shells that became smeared with fingerprints the instant you picked them up. The G Power ships with Android 10, and that's one of the most notable strikes against it. Since this is a budget Moto phone, the company promises just one major OS update, which will bring the G Power up to Android 11. This device runs on a Snapdragon 662, which is a perfectly capable ARM chip from a hardware perspective. The 3GB RAM in the base model is also a bit on the anemic side, but it still works well. Simple games can run well enough on this device, but the graphics often take a substantial step down compared to more powerful phones. The Moto G Power has a squircle-shaped camera module on the back with four evenly spaced things. You turn to the Moto G Power 2021 because you want a phone that goes a long time on a charge, and with a 5000 mAh battery, this is a phone that can deliver on that promise. Number 3. Google Pixel 4a – Best Camera Most of the Pixel 4a's strengths really made me appreciate Google's cheap phone. The battery life, the size, the headphone jack are all fantastic. But one thing ended up getting in the way of me keeping the Pixel 4a. The Google Pixel 4a is the perfect size if you like small phones. The 5.81-inch display might seem big on a spec sheet, but the small bezels and punch hole camera can make this a truly one-handed phone. Also, it's quite light at just 143 grams. It felt like I was holding a toy the entire time I used the phone. As for the display, it's good. Google went with a 5.81-inch AMOLED panel that really didn't make me miss the Quad HD resolution of other flagship phones. The Pixel 4 Ray's display gets dim enough for nighttime use, and it's contrasty without appearing unnatural. The stereo speakers get loud enough to walk around the house playing music or podcasts with, Google Pixel 4a comes with a 3140mAh non-removable battery, which is larger than the power pack in its predecessor. The Google Pixel 4a comes with enough power to ensure you can do everything you want on the phone. You get a Snapdragon 730 chipset, 6GB of RAM, and 128GB of storage. There aren't too many smartphones around these days which you can comfortably use one-handed, but the Google Pixel 4a is one of them. Number 2. Samsung Galaxy A52 5G best runner-up. The A52 5G is the highest spec of the budget A-series Galaxy phones we'll see in the US this year, offering all of the basics for its affordable price tag along with a few good extras. The Galaxy A52 5G is designed to have a solid build without the bells and whistles you'll find on flagship smartphones. That said, 120Hz isn't a specific reason to opt for this phone. 
but we found it to perform well without having a noticeable difference on battery life. There's an octa-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 750G processor doing the heavy lifting here. You won't get a top-end experience with this chipset, but it's powerful enough for most tasks, and you're unlikely to be frustrated when it's a touch slower. The camera on the Samsung Galaxy A52 5G sounds good on paper, and we found the results to be similarly impressive in real life. The Galaxy A52 5G comes with a 4500 mAh cell, and the company claims the smartphone will offer a two-day battery life. In practice, we found it lasted much closer to a single day of full usage, but if you're not using the phone a lot each day, you may find it'll last you too. On the whole, the Samsung Galaxy A52 5G is a nice mid-ranger that offers a lot of value, far more than its predecessor. Number 1. Xiaomi Mi 10T – Best Overall the Mi 10T Pro uses the tried and tested flagship killer formula, giving you the performance of a top-of-the-line device at a fraction of the price, but adds some interesting other features too. For one, it's actually surpassing every single mainstream non-gaming proper flagship in its display's refresh rate, albeit at the cost of using an LCD and not an OLED. Firstly, as with many Xiaomi phones, the Mi 10T Pro has a pretty impressive main camera with the same 108 megapixel snapper we've seen in a few of the company's other phones. The Snapdragon 865 processor used here provides snappy speeds, useful for editing those super high-res photos you just took or playing games. It would work well with a high refresh rate screen, as 144Hz is usually great for gaming, though few mobile games are actually optimized for that just yet. The Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro's battery life lightly won't let you down. With its 5000 mAh battery, which is one of the biggest you'll find in a smartphone, a handset will easily last you a day. You're getting a mostly delightful package which includes smoothness on par with the best out there, a performance that's top-notch, a main camera that's better than anything else we've seen in a flagship killer that isn't the Galaxy S20 FE, amazing battery life, and a screen that punches way above expectations for an LCD. Buying Guide RAM RAM is one of the most important aspects of budget phones. Some folks will look at the processor, and that's fine, but in my experience, the RAM will make or break a phone. Fortunately, we're living in a world where even the low-end phones are coming out with 2GB of RAM. By today's standards, that's the very bare minimum a phone has to have to be usable. I've used phones with less, and it's not pretty. RAM is more important than processor in the end. Build Quality Putting together a budget-friendly phone is generally straightforward. Use as much plastic as you can. Plastic is crazy cheap and cheap feeling, but it's also a pretty good material to use for a phone. It's somewhat durable and can generally survive a fall or three. If you're planning to throw your phone in a case, then this probably isn't a big issue for you. Occasionally, a mid-range phone OEM will throw in some aluminium rails, which is nice. Generally, you won't find anything better than Gorilla Glass 3 covering the screen, so anything you can find over that is an upgrade. Battery The battery usage differs from user to user depending on the way he or she uses the smartphone. If you're a heavy user and work on apps, play games, stream videos and more, then go for a smartphone with at least 3500 mAh battery or above. If you're an average or light user, a handset with 3000 mAh battery would be good enough to run for a full day.